peaceful waters along the shores of Norway are peaceful no longer. It was in these neutral waters that Germany claimed sanctuary for her ships in the traffic of war. The Allies' answer was to mine the Norwegian coast, to force German ships out into the open sea to meet the Royal Navy. It was in the neutral Norwegian waters that Germany claimed the right to destroy neutral ships and murder non-combatant seamen against all international law. But when the Allies answered force with force, once again Germany marched to aggression. But no one outside Germany will believe that the ruthless invasion of Norway and Denmark, the occupation of the strategic Danish bridges, was not planned long ago. Our sympathy goes out to Denmark's king, who felt his country not strong enough to resist the German invasion. So Copenhagen comes under Hitler's heel. But Norway decides to defend her freedom and join the Allies, who are ready to help her in the battle. And within a few hours, the power of the Allies is speeding across the sea to her defense. So the war flares into action. The German Navy puts to sea. And London watches the coming and going of ministers and leaders. The Danish minister calls at number 10. Sir Edmund Ironside, chief of the Imperial General Staff, is also in Downing Street. War Minister Oliver Stanley is with Mr. Anthony Eden and Chief of Air Staff Sir Cyril Newell. Air Minister Sir Samuel Hoare comes out with Sir Kingsley Wood. Minister of Information Sir John Reith and Mr. Churchill. Once again, the first brunt of battle falls on the Royal Navy, speeding towards the defense of freedom. We await the outcome of the fight, confident in the rightness of our cause and in the unity and power of our forces. <laughs>